good morning everyone today yeah this morning i am out in the car because they are calling for snow and as usual i forgot a couple things that i need for thanksgiving so i am on my way to my local grocery store to get those items and yeah i hope that you will want to stick around for a little bit of my day and i will talk to all of you in just a little while hello again everyone yeah it is snowing outside very lightly but what they said is that yeah we're supposed to get quite a little accumulation so I thought I would hurry out first thing this morning because you can never tell where we live whether it's going to just start being a blizzard. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I, I'm going to go get the couple things that I needed and get back. And I'm glad I went because they had wonderful fresh ginger on sale. And so, yeah, I bought a great big piece. And this was actually bigger because, as you can see by what's around me here, since I was able to get more ginger, I decided that I was going to ferment some vegetables. And what I am going to be fermenting today is just a vegetable me medley is what it's called. And I got this online at the paleoleap.com. And it follows the, uh, excuse me for reaching here, the recipe in the book that came with my pickle pipes except for this recipe instead of adding garlic it adds diced apples and it eliminates um, the the bay leaf and that sort of thing so that's just the spices so I'm going to go ahead and do this because I wanted something that I would be able to put out at Christmas time that the kids would like that would be good for them so that's why I'm doing this now anyways it's really easy because all it takes now the original recipe said that it made a gallon and yeah I don't need a gallon I'm just going to make two quarts so I, I cut the recipe in half and hey you can cut the recipe in half again if you would like to just make one quart but for two quarts it's going to be two apples that's been cored and diced, two cups of cauliflower florets, four carrots that's been, or I'm sorry, two carrots, yeah, that has been peeled and diced, and four green onions that have been sliced thinly, and then one and a half tablespoons of grated fresh ginger, and of course, our sea salt and, or, and water to make the brine. So anyways, I decided that since I'm making two quarts, I did not want to have more of one vegetable or fruit or whatever in one container. So I'm going to be dumping half of these ingredients in, mixing them up and putting them in each one because I just wanted it to be a little bit more even. That's why you see, you know, so many of the same thing out here. So there's my carrots and my apples and my cauliflower and my part of my green onion here and half of my ginger. And we are just going to mix this up. Yeah. I didn't need a spoon to do that, don't you? Yeah. Be right back. So yeah, I'm just going to mix this up here, make sure that that ginger is evenly distributed there, and I will put that in this first jar. Now I have never made this before, so I don't even know, you know, how this is going to fill up this jar. It said that you need to leave an inch of headspace because the vegetables will expand. So, it also says you need to pack them down. So, we will be packing them down. Probably should have been doing that as I was going. 
do the smaller end here. And then we add our brine. So here is my brine and what we're going to do is we're going to put the weight in the jar and then we are going to cover or we're going to pour the brine into our jar. Making sure that it's filled up past the veggies. And then all we do is take a clean cloth and wipe our rim, putting our pickle pipe on top and the ring and putting it in a cool dark place for a little while. And what they recommended is that you go by taste for how long you want yours to ferment. So, you know, after a few days, taste it. See what it tastes like. And if you like it, then remove the pickle pipe, put a lid on it, and put it in your fridge. And it will last for weeks and weeks. So I'm going to go ahead and do my second one. And yeah, I think this is going to turn out nice. For today's devotion, we will be reading from Psalm 26, verse 7, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and declare all your wonders. And we are continuing this week having devotions on thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is an expression of gratitude for the things we have, the health we enjoy, and the people we love. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 tells us, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We're to give thanks in everything. And having the right perspective helps us to be grateful. I am sure you've all heard to look at the glass half full, not half empty. And as I was preparing this devotion, I found a story that I thought helped put things into perspective. In Budapest, a man goes to the rabbi and complains, life is unbearable. There are nine of us living in one room. What can I do? The rabbi answers, take your goat in the room with you. The man is incredulous. But the rabbi insists, do as I say, and come back in a week. A week later, the man comes back looking more distraught than before. We can't stand it, he tells the rabbi. The goat is filthy. The rabbi then tells him, go home and let the goat out and come back in a week. A radiant man returns to the rabbi a week later, exclaiming, Life is beautiful. We enjoy every minute of it now that there is no goat and only nine of us. This is a funny story that demonstrates how our perspective in our circumstances can help us to be truly thankful. But how can we show gratitude? Well, in my husband's morning message this past Sunday, he mentioned three things to remember. First, we are to look back at what God has done for us. Second, we are to look up and offer him our praise. And third, we are to look forward to what God wants to do for us. We have much to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for he was a model for gratitude throughout his life on earth. And he is working all things together for our good. As Romans 8, 28 tells us, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We have an opportunity this Thanksgiving to practice being thankful. If we're struggling today, let's practice praising God in thankfulness for all the good things that he has done, for he deserves all our praise regardless of our circumstances. 
And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. An unknown author wrote, if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. God bless and I will talk to you tomorrow.